Hello and welcome to the Motorway Man and welcome back to my series where we'll be looking at the service station history of Britain's motorways, looking at some new, some old and some undeveloped service stations across the UK and in today's show we'll be looking at the M5. So, some basic facts to get us going. The M5 is 163 miles long and opened in 1962. It runs from Birmingham all the way down to Exeter via Gloucester and today has 11 service stations. But at one point, if all plans came to fruition, it could have had up to 24 potential service stations. And by the way, as always, before I get into today's episode on the M5, please subscribe to the channel because it will help me out a lot. And if you're feeling super generous, support me on Patreon for exclusive perks and benefits that you're not going to find anywhere else. And as also, just a quick note before we start, the M5 is quite a long motorway, so I'll be splitting this into two episodes, just so you know. So, let's get into the video. We'll be starting at the M5's official start point in West Bromwich near Birmingham at the Ray Hall interchange with the M6. This interchange is super rare and one of the kind in the UK, as we don't see a triangle junction that often. But we must move on to our journey start and the first service station we come to is Frankly Services, operated by Moto and opened in 1966. Frankly sits between Junction 3 and 4 of the M5 and is famous for being the first motorway service station to be built, not to feature a footbridge connecting the two sides. I visited Frankly and did the service station tour of Frankly services, which you can watch on the channel if you want to see it, but we have to move on to our next stop of the day at Hazer services. Not much is known about Hazer services as it didn't exist as a proposal for too long and was refused after only one year on the cards in 1994. So we must move on to Newland Common services. This service station sits between Junction 5 and 6 of the M5. It was meant to be the M5's first service station and the Department of Transport were so certain that it was going to be built. They even bought 11 acres of required land and even installed slip roads, which we can see on the image. But Newland Common Services wasn't built, due to over time operators choosing to build in different locations. So by the 80s, no one was interested in Newland Common Services and by the 90s, it had pretty much been forgotten about completely. So, next up is Worcester Services, proposed by my favourite operator Extra in 1995. That site was quickly refused however due to government deciding that there was just no need for a service station there. Extra did go on to appeal the decision, but plans were refused completely in 1997. And now we do come to a successful service station, and that's Strencham Services. Strencham is operated by Roadchef and opened in originally 1962. Strencham is a cool service station and of course it's worth a stop. We next arrive at Staverton Services, proposed to be between Junction 10 and 11 of the M5. The proposal included two small main buildings connected by a footbridge, a picnic area and a few parking spaces on each side, so it does sound like quite a nice service station, but unfortunately Staverton Services was never built. Next, we would come to Brockworth Services at Junction 11A. The services was proposed in 1997 but refused on appeal in 2001 due to objections by other operators. This next site is a service station that exists today, Gloucester Services between Junction 11A and 12 of the M5. Gloucester opened in 2015 making it the M5's newest service station and one of the newest in the country as well. Gloucester Services is operated by Westmoreland, which you can learn about in my Westmoreland Service Station Operator video. Definitely recommend that one. Gloucester Services is much like T-Bay and features a farm shop, a butcher's and a building has a cool grass roof so it's certainly very environmentally friendly and certainly an interesting stop on your journey. Speaking of next stop on our journey, we have come to Hardwick Services at Junction 12. This site was planned and submitted by Extra, but was refused for an unknown reason. The next site along would have been Morton Valence Services. Morton Valence Services was another failed service station to still have slip roads installed, which if you did drive past on the M5 you'd be able to see. Morton Valence wasn't built, but the Department of Transport still technically owns the land today, so I guess if they wanted to they could still build a service station there should the need arise. 
but after an unfortunate fail at Morton Valen Services, Welcome Brig would have a success at Michaelwood Services. Michaelwood opened in 1972 when the M5 was still pretty new. Michaelwood Services is located near both the Forest of Dean and the Cotswolds, so Michaelwood is in a really pretty swell area, so I would recommend a visit to Michaelwood because I think it's very nice. So anyway, Michaelwood seems like a pretty nice place to call it a rest for today. So we'll revisit the M5 next week on Sunday the 17th of September for part 2 where we'll carry on. I'll give you all the interesting facts when we get to the end of course. So we're about halfway of 163 miles which is pretty nice and dandy. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate your time. Check out part 2 of the M5 service station history next Sunday and I shall catch you in the next one. Please give the video a thumbs up. And support me on Patreon for loads of perks and benefits and all that cool stuff. I shall catch you in the next one. Subscribe and goodbye.